How can teachers use audiovisual materials to promote learning that persists? How can audiovisual materials enable students to enjoy learning through vicarious experience? These were two of the many important research and development questions addressed by an extraordinary educational technology pioneer, Edgar Dale. So today we will be studying the concept of Edgar Dale's cone of experience. Are you ready? Yes, sir. This is the overview of our discussion. We will talk about the short background of the thinker, Edgar Dale, the concept of the cone of experience and its application to education. Edgar Dale, born in 1900 at the dawn of a new millennium, Edgar Dale's work continues to influence educational technologists in the 21st century. D. While working on the family farm and later as a teacher in a small rural school, Dale earned both his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of North Dakota partially through correspondence courses. In 1929, he completed a Ph.D. at the University of Chicago, and then joined the Eastman Kodak Company where he collaborated on some of the earliest studies of learning from film. Interestingly, although many of these early studies were experimental ones designed to compare learning from film with other media, Dale later expressed disdain for such studies. Although he traced his ideas back as far as Pestalozzi, who pioneered the concept of learning through activity, and Froebel, who first promoted the principle that children have unique needs and capabilities, Edgar Dale's work was most heavily influenced by John Dewey. Dewey stressed the importance of the continuity of learning experiences from schools into the real world and argued for a greater focus on higher order outcomes and meaningful learning. This is the illustration of Dale's cone of experience. The cone of experience is a visual model, a pictorial device that presents bands of experience arranged according to degree of abstraction and not degree of difficult. This model incorporates several theories related to instructional design and learning processes. This was introduced by Edgar Dale 1946, in his textbook on audio-visual methods in teaching. He made minor modifications of the visual in the second edition 1954, changing dramatic participation to dramatized experience and adding television. During the 1960s, Edgar Dale theorized that learners retain more information by what they do, as opposed to what is heard, read, or observed. His research led to the development of the cone of experience. Today, this learning by doing has become known as experiential learning or action learning. Now, how can teacher use the cone of experience? According to Dale's research, the least effective method at the top involves learning from information presented through verbal symbols, example of this is listening to spoken words. In moving toward the pinnacle of the cone from direct purposeful experiences to verbal symbols, the degree of abstraction gradually increases. As a result, learners become spectators rather than participants Seals, 1997. The bottom of the cone represented purposeful experience that is seen, handled, tasted, touched, felt, and smelled, Dale, 1954, p. 42. By contrast, at the top of the cone, verbal symbols, i.e., words, and messages are highly abstract. They do not have physical resemblance to the objects or ideas. As Dale, 1969, wrote, the word horse as we write it does not look like a horse or sound like a horse or feel like a horse, p. 127. The most effective methods at the bottom involves direct, purposeful learning experiences, such as hands-on or field experience. Direct, purposeful experiences represents reality or the closest to real, everyday life. Dale, 1969, explained that the broad base of the cone illustrated the importance of direct experience for effective communication and learning. Especially for young children, real and concrete experiences are necessary to provide the foundation of their permanent learning. The historical importance of Dale's Cone rests in its attempt to relate media to psychological theory Seals, 1997, and the Cone has shaped various sets of media selection guidelines ever since. For example, influenced by Dale, Briggs, 1972, delineated general principles for media selection according to the age of learners, the type of learners, and the type of task. In 1972 Dale wrote that to experience an event is to live through it, to participate in it, to incorporate it, and to continue to use it. To experience is to test, to try out. 
It means to be a concerned participant, not a half-attentive observer. Thus, effective learning environments should be filled with rich and memorable experiences where students can see, hear, taste, touch, and try. Dale articulated the characteristics of rich experiences. In a rich experience, students are immersed in it and use their eyes, ears, noses, mouths and hands to explore the experience. Students have a chance to discover new experiences and new awareness of them. Students have emotionally rewarding experiences that will motivate them for learning throughout their lives. Students have chances to practice their past experiences and combine them to create new experiences. Students have a sense of personal achievement, and students can develop their own dynamic experiences. Thank you for listening. Hope you understand the concept and application of Dale's Cone of Experience. Thank you to Haida Anderson and Michael Melenda for the write-up about Dale's Cone of Experience. Some of the text are taken from https colon slash slash litfoundations.pressbooks.com. Again, Dale's Cone of Experience is a tool to help to make decisions about resources and activities.